It's a, it's a single command that I'm going to talk about today that hopefully will make your life a bit easier. And what the command that will solve is actually allowing you to authenticate towards your tenant and towards the graph with an app-only registration that you create in the Azure AD. And there's many blog posts out there and even the PowerShell repo, there is a, a tutorial on how to set that up. You have to create a certificate, you have to create an entry in the Azure AD, you have to upload the certificate, you have to grant the correct permission scopes and, and all that stuff. And um, a couple of weeks ago, we were having a little meeting with the team and we were like, can't we automate that? Yeah, actually, why, why wouldn't we be able to automate that? And, and that's effectively what this commandlet does for you. It basically does all the work for you. So let me show you how it works. Um, I enter initialize PNP PowerShell authentication. I give the name of the application and let's say uh, PNP rocks. Then my tenant that I specify. Then I can specify an existing path to an existing certificate. But in this case, I just want to create a new certificate. So I can specify all these parameters like common name, country, state, all these things that are applicable to certificates, but I'll just leave them um, blank. If I specify the out path, it will actually generate both the CR file and the PFX file. So the public and the private version of, the, of your certificate, it will create those. So you can take them with you somewhere and reuse them if you want to. But if you, you don't have to do that, you can also just specify the store parameter. You say, listen, I want to add that certificate to my uh, current, um, current user store in Windows. So in this moment on, it will create the certificate and it will um, upload that certificate to your user store, your certificate manager in, in Windows, and it will create the Azure AD entry. So if I press enter right now, you see there's a pop-up behind the screen, behind the PowerShell, and I'm logging in to my tenant, and it says already certificate added to store, and now it waits 60 seconds. So while we're doing that, I'm actually showing you what's happening in AD. And if I reload this page now, and authenticate again. Takes a bit. There we go. There's my entry. So if my app. And if I click on the API permissions, you notice that um, we um, requested a couple of scopes by default. Group read, write all, user read all, sites, full control all, and user read all. Uh, they're app only. Um, permissions, and we require admin consent. Now, you could already go here, if you know where to find and click, you can just click grant admin consent. But uh, in this case, we just wait a bit here because we'll actually launch that flow for you. So it should be done anytime soon if I manage to talk for 60 seconds. We've been testing a bit on how long this should take, and we thought that 60 seconds is a fail uh, is, is a is a, uh, a safety uh, safe amount of seconds to wait. I tried first with 20, and sometimes it works, sometimes it didn't. It wants me to log in. There we go. You see exactly what we just requested, and I click accept. And we're done. And the commandlet returns an Azure App AD and a certificate thumbprint. So from this moment on, uh, because the certificate is already loaded in my um, certificate manager in Windows, I can do connect PNP online, URL on my tenant, I say client ID, that is this guy over here, and uh, thumbprint. That is this value. And don't you worry, I will, um, everything you see that you can use towards my tenant, I will delete afterwards, although you need a certificate. Um, there we go. And I'm connected. And from this moment on, I can just do any other command list. So I get PNP list. And you see, this happened before. So sometimes it's a bit tricky. You have to wait sometimes. So sometimes I do connect again. Now it doesn't want me to do it. Typical demo. Oh wait, I'm gonna exit PowerShell and reopen PowerShell. Connect. There we go. 
I have a connection to PowerShell, and if I do a graph commandlet, I just for the speed of it, as I exclude side URL, there we go. This is done through a graph. Um, um, we call the graph for this commandlet. So a single way of authenticating uh, both to the graph and to SharePoint um, with a client ID and a an, uh, certificate, very easy to set up. Um, you can provide your own certificate if you want to. Um, if you don't want to, we generate the certificate for you. As you see, maybe we should have waited a bit longer than 60 seconds. I've been thinking of making that configurable so you can define yourself like, okay, wait two minutes. Um, it's a, usually, a, it's a one-time action. Uh, you do it one time, and then from that moment on, you can use that uh, client ID, that client, and the thumbprint. Um, if you do not want to use the thumbprint, but you want the certificate, the Connect PNP Online command that also allows you to provide the uh, PFX file as an input instead of a thumbprint. You don't have to add it to your store if that is your preference and you want to bring that certificate with you. So. The initialize command that also allows you, as I mentioned before, to save the files actually to your file system and then take them with you. Now, and Irvin. Just, yeah. yeah, sorry. Sorry. No, I said at least uh, 13 minutes for questions. No, no. <laughs> yes, exactly. A few questions and a few recaps. What is this fixing? What was wrong? What was wrong in the old model? Just a recap for those who are not super familiar with uh, with the BMP PowerShell. Just well, there's, no, there's, no, there's nothing wrong as such, but this will make your life just a bit easier. There's no credential management. There is a central way of, of defining what this specific app registration can do. Um, okay. As someone, an administrator could set this up for you, provide you with this information, you can connect to it. The administrator can revoke that access for you in a relatively central way. Um, and that, that coming back on the, what Rune is asking, uh, uh, what permissions are needed to run successfully the, after that configuration? Yeah, you, Answer well, is you, nothing, yep. basically, just, just the thumbprint and ID. Exactly, exactly. Although to run the initialize, you need, of course, the appropriate access rights to the Azure AD to be able to Correct. create a registration. Uh, but after that, no, it's the, the, the permissions that has been assigned to this app registration that is the ones that you're using. Yes, indeed. Um, you can use this command that also, by the way, to uh, grant your own uh, uh, you, you notice that we added a couple of out of the box, or out of the box, we added a couple of permissions here. But you can, with the initialize command, uh, provide your own scopes if you want to. For the graph, we have created a bunch out of the box in there, and for SharePoint Online, we created a bunch in there. So if you need a bit more, right? For instance, the terms to a readle, you can add that, and then we will register those um, permissions also for your app. So there's several ways of uh, extending the uh, the um, the creation of the error registration. Um, yeah. This is nothing you need only for PowerShell. Any any code you write that uses an, an app registration, app only registration, can make use of this command effectively, where you simply create the Azure AD entry like this without you generating. And, the, and then within your website. web application or application, you would use that yeah. certificate and that thumbprint, and voila, yes. everything just magically works. And that's actually yes. pretty cool. So there's this. Should we say that this is truly magical, uh, yeah. which which was covered on the on the intro as well. Now. There's a question here if MFA is enabled, it doesn't yeah. apply. It, 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 there is no user authentication here. You're not using a username well, you, and a password. You were forced to grant uh, the, the- Yeah, yeah, the okay. The granting part, but that runs in the browser effectively. So the whole MFA flow will just kick in at that moment in time. We're not doing it. Yeah. The, the UI you saw there is actually, was it just basically think of it as a, a browser window navigating to Azure um, and the yeah, authentication so endpoint shape of uh, that, Azure. That's a super, yeah. super complex way of saying Yes, MFA will. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> You're trying to, yeah, anyway. Um, so basically, as part of that authentication flow, when we granted uh, the basic set of permissions. Now, somebody might obviously come back and say, well, wait, wait, what was the basic set of permissions? So why do you need to grant that set of permissions? Can we actually repeat that? Because we have till still time. So if you, if you execute that, that with a being created, these are the ones yep. that we create. Group Correct. read write is needed to have access to unified groups, etc. User read write, well, you do a lot of stuff with users, so you want to be able to grant users access to your groups, for instance, and remove users from your groups. Sites full control. PMP PowerShell is typically used in administrative uh, environments, um, controlling things in site collections. Um, we thought that sites full control, it, it is a big one. We, 
totally acknowledge that, um, would be uh, the easiest because you basically can do anything then. And uh, because you can write to the AD, because otherwise you will not be able to use this initialized commandlet, you already have quite a lot of writes then. Yeah. Um, so um, this is yeah. absolutely targeted for tenant administrators to configure yes. once rather than granting you uh, granting specific accounts certain set of permissions, creating an Azure IAD application, which is then provided with a thumbprint and a certificate for people who actually use, use this uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. Just yeah. recapping things, recap, 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 this is always important. The default expiration of the certificate is 10 years. Yeah, yeah there's a question from John here. Yeah, yeah. And obviously, as an administrator, that, that's that's the whole point of, of having the authentication as an Azure AD-based authentication and an application-based authentication. So it's not about creating a service account, which you then share the account ID and a password with multiple people. Um, and what if you have an MFA enabled and then that makes things complicated and then you in the worst case scenario you have a, a mobile phone which you give to somebody else to actually mfa in which is insane that's not what microsoft wants you to do yeah it, it's much better to actually have an application specific registration like in this case um, and the bmp rocks uh, is basically just an application which which uh, the powershell command let created and then there's the default set of scopes and you can add additional scopes here as well and, the, and you, then you get the thumbprint and the certificate, which is basically matching to user ID and uh, the password, so to say, in, in imaginary world, then it's not precisely the same, but it's it's almost the same. And then people can use that information to come in. If needed, administrator can say that, hey, what is this? And let's get rid of these permissions. Oof, they're gone without deleting an account, without forcing a re-password, whatever, because that's not a reliable model. So, huge. Carl, it was asking here, why did I have to restart PowerShell? Um, that was the question, yeah. <laughs> yeah, with the risk of going too technical, but we set a lot of static variables with values underneath uh, during this PowerShell session. Restarting it actually cleared those variables of its current values and allowed me to reconnect correctly. Once the connection yeah. fails using the certificate, that variable was not cleared out correctly. And that was the reason I had to restart it. Yeah. Can an admin reset the certificate? Well, it can, yeah. Yeah, you can remove it from the app registration. Yeah. Yes, exactly, exactly. And then, uh, is anybody alerted when certificates is due to expire soon? I think that isn't that that's some sort of a Azure setting. I don't know if there's a native I Azure don't setting. Know. I don't know actually. It's, it's the classical know. thing. You you might think that Azure has that kind of capability, um, in because this is nothing to do with SharePoint, nothing to do with BMP. It's just Azure oh. AD application. Um, there's an expired setting, but obviously you want to have that warning so that your application doesn't expire or doesn't break on. Now, what's interesting around this one is, is I think Rodrigo said it really well, just to recap this as well. This is really useful for Azure functions. If you connect from the Azure functions to the SharePoint, as an example, using the PMP PowerShell, um, yeah. because now you can create the certificate application registration in Azure AD from your computer and then you have the certificate you have the, the all of the needed connection information to call from the azure functions and then you go to the azure function set up the powershell settings for that one and voila everything magically works it's super cool someone asked here when this is available this is available since last week friday yep a lot of good feedback on, on this one this one with 90 percent of my clients that's good that's really good Rodrigo, that your clients understand uh, this level of a uh, technical details <laughs> Thank you.